Good evening Philippines, this is Mike Padua and we're back to our latest analysis for this Monday through Wednesday, April 4 to 6, 2022 and this is brought to you by Typhoon 2000. Let's begin with our update. Here's the latest graph set for today, Monday until tomorrow, Tuesday. We have a couple of low pressure areas that we are monitoring right now. The first one, this is uh, formerly a remnant of 94W and has regenerated back to a uh, uh, minimal uh, low pressure system and it's now within the Philippine Air Responsibility moving across the South Philippine Sea um, uh, around uh, 2 p.m. this afternoon it was uh, uh, 600 kilometers east of Surigao City and it's moving slowly towards the uh, um, northern Mindanao and Visayas area this uh, low pressure system has a low chance of developing into a tropical cyclone within the next 24 hours and its trough will uh, begin to affect Mindanao in the next uh, 24 hours as well as the Visayas as this low pressure system is expected to move towards these areas and may remain quasi-stationary for the next uh, 3 to 5 days within the Philippines, Central Philippines. Okay, So this is uh, quite an interesting system. But let's hope and pray that it won't uh, intensify into a tropical cyclone because uh, one of the reliable computer models, the uh, European model, suggests a development into a uh, strong LPA and eventually into a tropical depression while lingering ag along the uh, Visayan area. So this will be closely monitored within the next uh, uh, couple of days. And... Uh, by the way, in other portions of the uh, Philippine Islands, we have the uh, northeasterly surface wind flow. This is quite strong, particularly over northern and central Luzon. So winds of 30 to 50 kph will be expected. And uh, lighter winds of less than 30 kph along the uh, Visayan area, Sulu Archipelago, Memoropa, while uh, 30 to 40 kph across the Bicol region and uh, Calabar zone, including uh, Metro Manila. So... There will be some showers passing by within this wind system and also the uh, wind system is uh, quite strong across the northern portions of the West Philippine and South China Seas. And uh, farther to the east, outside of power, we are also monitoring another low pressure area. This is 95W, which is currently a medium chance of developing in a tropical cyclone. Uh, but uh, as of the latest this evening, it has been downgraded to uh, low chance or less than 30% because of weakening uh, uh, development of this low pressure system. But this may regenerate again once it moves across western Micronesia, particularly Yap and Palau. So this is also an area of interest in the coming days. And we have a, a, a shear line, okay, associated with the uh, frontal system moving to the southeast of Japan. So that's the latest from the uh, graph set. Here's the fast animation. So there you go, uh, the uh, uh, disorganized circulation of LPA 94W moving towards the uh, Visayan area. While 95W is also disorganized somewhere here. And if we take a look at the uh, zoom in satellite animation from Windy, as the evening progresses, some uh, isolated thunderstorms can be seen across eastern Bicol region, portions of central Visayas, as well as eastern uh, sections of Mindanao and northern Mindanao as well. The uh, areas of Samar will also have some passing rain showers because of the trough brought about by this LPA 94W, which is moving closer towards the Visayas. So if we take a look at the rain forecast from the European model, which is the most reliable forecast when it comes to rainfall, for the next three days until Thursday, the uh, LPA is expected to move closer towards northern Mindanao and the Visayas. And on Tuesday afternoon, it was expected to uh, dump isolated rain showers and uh, thunderstorms across Visayas, Mimaropa, and um, Mindanao as the system will move more to the west-southwest, approaching uh, Karga area. 
So watch out for possible flash floods and landslides when we have uh, severe thunderstorms generated by this uh, weather system. Also here across the uh, Ilocos region in the western sections of central Luzon, there might be some localized thunderstorms brought about by the northeasterly surface wind flow as well as eastern Cagayan and eastern Isabela. And uh, Metro Manila will also be expecting some rains and thunderstorms by tomorrow afternoon, Tuesday. By Wednesday afternoon, continuous uh, thunderstorm activity will be expected across Mindanao and portions of eastern and central Visayas as the LPA uh, remains quasi-stationary over uh, Mindanao, Visayas area. And some thunderstorms will uh, continue to prevail by Wednesday afternoon across uh, western sections of the zone, including Calabar zone, Metro Manila, uh, Mindoro, and uh, Marinduque. And on Thursday afternoon, the uh, LPA 94W uh, is expected to slowly organize over the uh, Sulu archipelago archipelago just southwest of uh, Negros and this is a thing to watch especially this coming uh, weekend into Palm Sunday so rains and thunderstorms will still prevail across Mindanao Sulu Archipelago Western and Central Visayas and also over Masbate and Eastern Bicol region where localized thunderstorms will be expected across various sections of Luzon particularly the uh, Sierra Madre mountain range along Isabela, Quirino, uh, Biscaya, and southern Cagayan, and also here across uh, Ilocos region and uh, the western sections of central Luzon. So that's the uh, three-day forecast. Let's move now to the rainfall accumulation forecast for the next three days. So the bulk of the rainfall, which could produce some... Flooding and landslides because of uh, severe thunderstorms brought about by the low pressure area 94W will be expected here across northern uh, Mindanao, Sambuanga Peninsula, Davao uh, region, as well as Oxygen and uh, Carga region, including uh, Dinagat and Siargao Islands. So these are the areas that uh, rains and thunderstorms will be expected because of the low pressure area 94W and isolated rains and thunderstorms will also prevail across eastern and uh, the northern coastal areas of the Bicol region, northern Panay, oriental Mindoro, while over uh, northern Luzon, uh, particularly the eastern sections down from Cagayan down to northern Quezon, this is due to the northeasterly surface wind flow. So expect some rain showers and thunderstorms there within the next uh, three days. Now let's take a look at the wind forecast, wind and pressure forecast from windy.com. This is from the uh, American model. So for the next three days until Thursday, the uh, northeasterly surface wind flow will prevail across the uh, Luzon and Visayas areas. While the LPA is uh, quite disorganized as it moves closer to Mindanao, Wednesday afternoon, uh, it's still there but starting to move into Mindanao area, northeasterly surface wind flow prevailing across various sections of Luzon and Visayas including Mimaropa. And on Thursday afternoon, uh, intensifying northeasterly uh, surface wind flow will be expected across extreme northern Luzon, while light northeasterly winds across the Bicol region. While the uh, LPA is uh, still here over uh, Mindanao, but is starting to move more to the east as it interacts with another uh, potential tropical cyclone to the east of Palau outside of Par. So that's the forecast for the wind. Now we are going to show to you the uh, forecast until Holy Wednesday to have an outlook on what will be the outcome of these uh, reported two tropical cyclones that may form and affect uh, the uh, waters of the Philippine Sea and um, South China and West Philippine Sea. 
including the uh, western sections of uh, Micronesia. So we use now the American model. So on Friday, the LPA 94W will be pulled back by 95W as it moves, as 95W moves closer towards the up. And then on Saturday, it will be absorbed by uh, 95W and eventually it may, it may become a tropical depression or tropical storm as it starts to recurve towards the north. It may not or may enter the Philippine air responsibility. So the uh, probability is still low as of this time. So remember, the forecast of more than uh, five days is still uh, low in uh, probability and it has a higher uncertainty. Now, uh, Palm Sunday, the LPA 94W will now be absorbed into the circulation of 95W as it moves more to the north, outside of PAR. And we have another one here over the West Philippine Sea forming north of the Spotless or north of Kalayan Island Group. And on Monday, Holy Monday, the uh, 95W as a tropical storm or even becoming a typhoon moves more to the uh, north. Okay. So this is no longer a threat to our country, but this one over the west of the zone is somewhat moving closer towards the uh, Ilocos region. So this is a thing to watch by next week, Monday. And on Tuesday, the uh, tropical cyclone to the west of uh, Luzon intensifies into a tropical storm. Holy Wednesday. It is expected to accelerate more towards the east-northeast as it is expected to be pulled by this uh, large system here, northeast of the Philippines, outside of PAR. And uh, Wednesday evening, it will start to make landfall over Ilocos region, somewhere along Pangasinan and La Union as a tropical storm. So that's the forecast from the American model, which is still highly uncertain so the uh, probability is very low less than 30 percent to zero percent so it's still uh, early to tell so many changes will happen based on the uh, latest from the american model now let's take a look at the european model which is much more uh, alarming when it comes to this uh, model on Friday, the low pressure system is uh, remaining, uh, will be remaining quasi stationary over Visayas. And on Saturday, it's still there, lingering along uh, Visayas and Masbate area, while the LPA 95W is uh, intensifying into a tropical uh, depression. And on Sunday, or Palm Sunday, uh, LPA 95W becomes a uh, tropical depression and eventually into a tropical storm as it moves closer to Yap or passing over Yap while 94W is over the waters of uh, southern Quezon or uh, Marinduque area and likely it is expected to become a tropical storm based on the model so it's not yet uh, uh, sure if this will going to happen because it will interact along the uh, uh, islands of Mindanao and Luzon. Monday afternoon, it will remain quasi-stationary still over the coastal areas of uh, uh, southern Quezon or uh, Batangas area along the uh, uh, areas of Oriental Mindoro. And uh, on Tuesday, or on Tuesday, the storm is still over the vicinity of uh, Calabarzon, somewhere along Batangas or Cavite, quasi-stationary, as the uh, tropical uh, cyclone to the east of the Philippines moves into the Philippine area of responsibility and is expected to move more towards the north-northwest and northward, while this one is expected to move towards the direction of this uh, weather system okay to the east of the philippine islands on holy wednesday it is uh, moving towards central zone and the evening of holy wednesday it will exit along the northern Quezon area so mm, at this point in time it's still highly uncertain we still don't know 
what will be the scenario it's still early to tell okay so the probability is less than 30 percent we will continue to monitor this system as the uh, week progresses okay so as of this time uh, we will uh, observe this system and we will let you know come wednesday let's hope and pray that this system won't push through and uh, without any landfall to our country so again on wednesday we will give you uh, another full update on this uh, potential uh, tropical uh, cyclones that could form east of the Philippines and another one over the Visayas and Southern Luzon area so we will uh, keep you updated on that and uh, here's the uh, forecast on the other one 95W so these are the uh, uh, global models that shows no threat to our country it is expected to record within the next 5 to 10 days okay this 240 hours is 10 days from now so this system is an unthreat to our country, but the other one here, okay, the one here is quite uh, uh, a system to watch in the coming uh, days. So we will keep you updated on Wednesday to give you more uh, uh, new information about that uh, tropical cyclone that could develop over the Visayan Sea. Let's hope and pray that it will uh, track more to the west and it won't uh, remain uh, stationary over the Philippine Islands because it could generate um, heavy rainfall that could lead to flooding and landslides. So we'll see you again on Wednesday from Typhoon 2000. This is Mike Pado reporting. Stay safe always. Be hashtag weatherizer. Be hashtag weatherizer. And thank you so much for watching our channel.